So compound interest is a type of way to calculate interest for a particular account or situation. And typically interest rates are given as a percentage. So for example, we would say a certain bank account has an interest rate of 5%, right? And that would be labeled with the letter I. And that I would mean interest rate. And so in this case, the interest rate would be 5%. Now that's a lot larger than you will see realistically. We don't really see bank accounts anymore with 5%. But for the sake of an example, that's what we're going to use. So if I were to deposit a certain amount of money in an account, let's say $100 at the present day in time, so that would be time equals zero. I'm gonna write t equals zero, just to signify that it is today. It's not in the future, it's not in the past but I'm putting that money in right now. And then what if I wanted to know how much I had in that account after one year as that money accumulates because of the interest rate? Well, we use the interest rate or that percentage and we multiply it by the amount that I have invested and that will calculate the amount of interest that I'll accumulate over that one year period. So what I can do is I can multiply my $100 here by that percent, which I'm going to change to a decimal format. That's like the first thing you always wanna do when you're working with interest rates. You're gonna to want to change it to its decimal form. Now I'm going to probably do a shortcut. I'm often going to just write it as 0.05, but you gotta be able to convert your percentages into decimals when you're working with interest rates. So then if I multiply by that 0.05, which will give me 5% of that $100, then I will find my interest over the one year period would be $5. So then I would add that to my already existing $100 in the account. And at the end of year one, I would have $105 in my account. And so then as I go into year two, I would be taking another 5%, but this time of the $105, because that's now what is in my account after one year. So now I'm gonna get a little bit more and then I'll get a little bit more. And we this can just continue to go on to any time n, right? Any year that I am interested in. And because interest is reinvested, this creates our concept of the compound interest process. So let's look at a more concrete example to really see what's going on here. And maybe we can even develop a formula that will help us to calculate compound interest over any period of time for a certain amount that we deposit. All right, so let's say that starting today, I'm going to deposit $1,000 into account that is offering an interest rate of 7%. Now, right away, I'm going to quickly convert this to a decimal of 0.07, and this would be a yearly compounded interest rate, which means that every year I'm going to earn some interest and then that interest carries over into the next year. So let's see how much interest I would generate over just one year. We'll start by writing our $1,000 and multiply it by the 0 0.07, and we'll find ourselves with $70 of accrued interest. So then if we add that $70 to our already existing $1,000, at the end of year one, we'll have $1,000. $70. So now let's move into year two. Now we have $1,070. And if we multiply that by our interest rate to see how much we'll have at the end of year two, we'll find that we earn $74.90 of interest. If we add that to our $1,070, we'll then have $1,144.90. And that would be at the end of year two. So then let's look at year three. What would happen if we do this one more time? We have now $1,144.90. We multiply that by our 0 0.07 or our interest rate. And then we get our new amount of interest, which would be $80.14 in this case. So we add that to our total from year two. And then we would find our total at year three, which is going to be $1,225.04. So we found how much we have at the end of three years, but that kind of took a little while. It was a little lengthy and we don't want to have to do that every time, especially if I wanted to know how much I'm going to have in my account at the end of 10 years or 20 years or 100 years. Imagine doing this 100 times. It doesn't seem like a lot of fun. We'd be here for a while. So we want to find a way to streamline this. We want to make it faster. We want to generalize it. So let's see what we can learn from this process and then we'll find a nice simple equation that we can then use to calculate compound interest. 
So first, let's start with year one and do a little bit of number analysis here. So the amount of money we had in our account at the end of year one was $1,070. And that came from adding $1,000 plus the amount of interest we earned over that year. And that gave us that 1,070. But notice that this $70 is actually equal to this right up here, right? 70 is equal to 1,000 times that interest rate. So we can actually rewrite this equation to 1,000 plus 1,000 times 0 0.07, and that is equal to $1,070. So then we can do a little bit of algebra and pull out this $1,000 from each term, and then we'll have another equivalent equation, and it looks like this. We have $1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.07, and that's still equal to $1,070. Notice we took this $1,000 out of this spot, which leaves one, and we took it out of this spot, which leaves just 0 0.07. So then we can add what's in the parentheses, and we have $1,000 times 1 1.07, which is equal to 1,070. So now let's look at year two. In year two, we started with $1,070, and then we added 74.90 to get 1,144 and 90 cents. So just like we did last time, where we redefined 70 as our initial deposit times the interest rate, we can also represent 74 and 90 cents as our total from the end of year one times the interest rate. So let's do that. We have our $1,070 plus $1,070 times the interest rate, and that's still equal to 1,000. 144 and 90 cents. And then we can pull out, just like we did with this 1,000, we can pull out the 1,070, and we'll find that we have 1,070 times 1 plus 0.07, and that's going to be equal to 1,144 and 90 cents, just like it was before. And then we can add what's in the parentheses, and we'll have 1,070 times 1 1.07, and that's still equal to the same amount at the end of year two. Now, we have a very similar look right here that we had over here. But now notice that this $1,070 is also equal to 1,000 times 1 1.07, right? This part right here is equal to this part. So we can plug that in. And then we find that we have 1,000 times 1 1.07 times another 1 1.07. And that is still equal to this 1,144 and 90 cents. And in case you're curious, why do we have two 1.07s? Well, this one comes from here, right? Nothing changed there. And this part is the same as this, which comes from here. So now we can simplify this a little further and we'll have $1,000 times 1.07 squared. And that equals $1,144. And 90 cents. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and then we'll do year three. All right, I just moved some numbers around there to leave us some room to continue here. So let's talk about year three now. We start with this $1,144.90 and we add the interest of $80.14. Remember that came from here and that's going to be equal to our 1,225 and four cents. So then once again, if we just redefine this interest value by what we did to find it, we can change our equation a little bit. We'll have 1,144.90 plus that same amount times the interest rate. And that's still going to be equal to this amount. I'm, <laughs> I'm running out of space here. Uh, I'm gonna try to fit it in here. Okay, it's a little small, but you know what that number is. So then we're gonna pull out this value right here. It is the same in each one of them. Just like we did before, we have $1,144.90 times 1 plus 0 0.07, and that's still equal to the same amount. And then we can simplify what's in the parentheses. We have $1,144.90 times 1 1.07, which is still equal to that same amount. And then we notice, and this is where it really gets cool, so take a look at this. We now have $1,144.90, but we also have that that's equal to $1,000 times 1.07 squared. So we can plug that in, and then we will find this. $1,000 times 1.07 squared times 
is still equal to this $1,225.04. So now we can simplify this one more time to get $1,000 times 1.07 to the third power is equal to $1,225.04. So why did we do all that? That was a lot of work and it was probably a little tedious to watch, but what was the purpose of that? Well, look at this. In year one, we had $1,000 times one plus the interest rate. And then in year two, we got our total by multiplying $1,000 times one plus the interest rate squared. And then in year three, we had the $1,000 that we started with times one plus the interest rate cubed or multiplied by itself three times. So what we learn here is that it seems like all we have to do to figure out how much money we have at the end of a certain year is to multiply our starting amount times one plus the interest rate to the power of how many years we wanna go in the future. So we can actually write a very nice equation to represent this. So to make our generalized equation, we have to keep in mind a few different things. So first of all, we're gonna label our initial deposit amount with the letter C, that's gonna be equal to our deposit, which was $1,000. And then if we call the amount of interest created over a certain period of time, we'll call that CI. So for example, in year one, that would have been $70, the amount of interest. So we'll just say interest generated. And then we also have N, the number of years that we're interested in. And finally, we have our interest rate I, which in this case was 0 0.07. What can we use all these different variables to do? Well, we found if we have our deposit of $1,000 C and we add it to our interest generated, which I'll do right here, we have C plus C I, that is equal to multiplying our deposit C times one plus the interest rate. Remember, this essentially from our example looks like this. We have our thousand plus $70 equals that 1000 times one plus 0 0.07. That is what we found and that equaled that thousand seventy dollars right? And we only did this one time. Our power was one. If we wanted to go into the next year, we would have C times one plus I squared, that's what we found, right? We just had 1,000 times 1.07 squared. And then for year three, this right here would become a three and so on. And so we we're able to make this interesting conclusion that the account will grow by a factor of one plus i every year. And this allows us to make this generalized equation of what a future value would be for our account with compound interest. And so finally, we get to make our equation that we're going to use to calculate compound interest, and that is the future value of an account using compound interest is equal to the initial deposit C times one plus the interest rate to the N power, where N is the number of years that we're interested in, at least in the scenario that we're looking at here. In the future, you'll see that N can also represent other periods of time, such as months, but that will always match up with the interest rate. And so far, we've only looked at yearly interest rates. So for now, it's fine to see that N as the number of years. And so that is a very nice result. We can actually write this in this way. We can say that the accumulated amount at time T is equal to the initial investment or the initial amount at time zero times our accumulation factor. And in this case, the accumulation factor, I'm gonna write this up here, is just equal to that one plus i to the amount of time periods n, which so far we've looked at years. But in this case, since we're using t, we would write a little t here, but t and n would essentially be the same thing. They still signify the amount of years. So sometimes you'll see it written like this, but sometimes you'll also see it written like this. It's all about what makes the most sense to you. I will use this equation the most because I think it's the simplest to follow. We have our future value, we have our initial deposit C, our interest rate I, and our amount of years N. And so this is actually a really cool equation 
that you now know where it comes from. This is how we calculate compound interest over a certain period of time. It's always nice to see where these equations come from rather than just to simply throw them at you. So you go, oh, I, I, you know, I guess it works. But now we know where it comes from and now we can use it for a variety of different problems. So now let's use this to solve an example problem. So this is probably what you're looking for right here. This is how we actually use that equation to solve a problem. And so for our problem, we have you deposit $600 in an account that earns compound interest at a rate of 4% per year. How much will you accumulate in five years? Well, first let's write our equation. That really nice equation that we just found. We have future value equals that initial deposit times one plus i to the n power. And the first thing I always do in these problems is figure out what I have and what I need. And in this case, what I have is a deposit C of $600. I have an interest rate I of 4%, which is equal to 0 0.04. And I also know how many years I'm interested in. In this case, n equals five years, right? We want to know how much will be accumulated in five years. So now let's plug in our values and let's see what happens. So we have our future value and that's equal to our initial deposit, which is 600 times one plus the interest rate 0 0.04. Again, remember to always convert that into a decimal. You don't want to be doing one plus 4% and do something incorrect such as 1.4. And then we take it to our n power of and so we filled everything in. Now all we have to do is simplify and calculate our answer. So I'll write the future value is equal to 600 times 1.04 to the fifth power. And if I plug that into a calculator, we will get that the answer is $729.99. So that would be our answer for this particular problem, which very nicely uses that formula that we found. And this is an alternative or easier way to do that very long method that we did at the beginning, right? We, we could have taken $600 times 0 0.04, and then that would be the amount of interest, and we'd add it to 600, and then that would be the end of year one, and then we'd have to do it for year two and year three. But instead, I'm just gonna get rid of this because we don't need to do that because this is a much easier way to do that that takes a lot less time. So the whole point of this lesson was to show you where that equation comes from and then how to use it. So if you want to see more examples on how to use this equation, I'll have an example video linked at the end of this video and it will also be located in the description below. So hopefully you found this to be helpful and you, you learned a little bit about compound interest and how to calculate it and where you know this equation comes from because it's not always obvious. Sometimes this is just thrown at you and you kind of have to figure it out for yourself. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, but that's all I had and I will see you in the next video.